In high school, I bought the movie The Prestige, and on the cover it said, you'll want to watch it again the second it is over. And I almost laughed, and I said, I can guarantee I won't want to watch this again as soon as it's over. That night I watched it, and it ended about midnight, and I thought, I want to watch this again because I wanted, like, how did they do that? Now, this isn't a review about The Prestige, but if it was, I'd give The Prestige an A for sure. But this is about the game Azul, and I get a very similar feel when I play Azul. As soon as the game is over, I can't stop thinking if I only had two more turns, if I would have done this instead of that, next time I'm going to try this strategy instead. And I love that about Azul, that when the game ends, even if I don't want to play immediately, I'm immediately thinking about what I want to do next time, and I'm really looking forward to that next game of Azul. In Azul, you are collecting tiles. In the center of the table are a handful of factories that each have four tiles placed on them at the first of a round. On your turn, you get to take all of the tiles of a single color from any factory. So, you could take these two snowflake tiles and add them to your player board. The remaining tiles are placed into a center draw pile. Players are now able to draw from any factory or from that center draw pile. That creates a really interesting dynamic, because you're not just choosing which tiles you take, but also which tiles get added into the center section, a new draw pile for other players. So you can really set other players up if you're not being careful by what you choose to take. When you take the tiles from the factory, you will place them on this gray line on your player board. You are trying to complete lines by the end of the round. The round ends once all of the tiles are taken from the factories in that center draw pile, at that point, any lines that are completed, all the way filled in, you will move a token over onto the wall, the colorful section of the board, and you will score points. Now how you score points is very interesting. You score points based off of what other tiles are surrounding it. So for example, if I were to move this tile over, I would only earn two points, one, two. Now when I move this tile over, I earn one, two, three, four, five points. As you can see, the order and the placement of your tiles is very important because it's going to score you a lot or not very many points at all. There are a few other ways to get points. If your player wall has a complete row or a complete column or all five of one color on your player wall, you'll get bonus points for that. So is Azul fun? Azul has great replayability. As soon as it's over, you're instantly thinking, if I only would have done this, and next time I want to do this. And that's a really good feeling, and that's when I feel like you have a good game, is when people are thinking about it and talking about it, even after the game has ended. I love that the game gives so many interesting decisions that make me feel clever. Which tiles am I taking, and which tiles does that make available for you? Where am I placing my tiles so that I can maximize the number of points I'm getting on my player board? The game is so simplistic and yet so thinky, and I think that's a hard thing to accomplish. Lots of games are in one camp or the other, where the options are so simple and so obvious that you don't feel like you're actually making the decision, it's just such an obvious thing to do. On the other hand, there's other games that really let you make good decisions, but they're so complex and it's such a difficult thing to learn that your average Joe can't really pick it up. Azul somehow meshes those together perfectly where it's very simple but also very thinky and lets you make a lot of good decisions. Another thing I love about the game is that it has these beautiful tiles. They could have just put little cardboard pieces in, but these tiles make it a lot of fun and it makes the experience just a lot better. I feel like the whole tabletop experience is nice because of these beautiful color tiles. The only negative thing I could say about the game is that maybe it is a little bit thinky. And for me, that's a really big bonus and a positive thing about the game. But for a new player, they may feel a little bit overwhelmed and may need a little bit of help strategizing what they need to do on their first turn or two so they don't feel overwhelmed and feel completely lost. But like I said, I think that's a good thing that you get to think a lot. So maybe it's not even a negative. I don't know. Overall, I give Azul an A. And I give Azul two thumbs up. This is an essential game. If you don't own it, you at least need to have given it a try a few times to see what it's like. There are three versions of Azul. I have played the traditional Azul, and I've also played Summer Pavilion. I haven't played Stained Glass. 
I would be interested to hear what your thoughts are if you have played all three Azuls. Which one do you think is the best? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Until next time.